this cape is my final project of my autumn winter capsule wardrobe project and I'm running a little late. A quick recap for anyone new who's watching this. I moved here from Singapore. I hate the cold. I don't have cute clothes for fall and winter, but I love to sew. So I make myself sew cute clothes for fall and winter so that I won't hate the cold as much. For my current autumn and winter capsule, I'm going for a retro 60s vibe with a yellow and grey color palette. I'm making my cape in this wool blend coating fabric in ochre, which is a muted mustard yellow color. And it's also the same color that I've used for earlier projects that I've made for my capsule. This crochet baguette purse and this knitted bonnet. The design that I want for this cape is pretty straightforward. I mean, a cape itself is a pretty simple design, but to give it like a groovy 60s vibe, I'm going to be adding rounded collars and I'm going to make the collar a little bit bigger than usual to give it a bit more of a statement. And I'm also going to be using these cute daisy buttons that I found on Etsy to make it look classy and chic and to give myself more work to do, I am going to be using bound buttonholes. And as with all capes, I'm going to have armhole openings on the front. I want it kind of like a dress length with the hem ending just slightly above my knees. Um, it might not sound super appealing, but I kind of like the idea of something like a blocky dome shaped thing. Like a, I thought it'd be kind of cute to have like a cape slash dress kind of a thing. I don't know how that's gonna work out design-wise, but we'll see. We're just one month away from spring equinox. I really wish I started on this way earlier, but I think I procrastinated for a little too long because it's a fabric that I'm not super familiar with and it's gonna be my first time drafting my own cape and I was just like, oh, afraid of failing or something like that. But it's okay. Better late than never and we're gonna get started. To draft the sewing pattern for my 60s inspired cape, I used two different drafting books for reference. The Vintage Pattern Drafting and Grading Book by M. Rowe, which I have shared in the previous video, and this flat pattern making book. I used a mix and match approach to drafting, so like if a part didn't make sense in one book, I drafted that section of the pattern with another book. It was hard for me to just follow one book all the way because at the end of the day, I was only using the books as a guide because the exact design I wanted from my own doesn't exist in the books. First, I traced out my body sloper, then I made extensions and drew curves for the shape of the cape. I drafted the back of the cape first, and then I used that to guide my drafting for the front of the cape. And finally, the neckline of the front and back of the cape were used to draft the collar. Now, important thing to note, these pattern pieces are drafted without the seam allowance included. I am pretty much done with drafting the sewing pattern for the cape, but there's this bit um, where the shoulder dart is that's a little confusing and I'm not quite sure if I'm manipulating it right. So since I would like this cape to be as close to perfect as I can the first time around, it means that I definitely should try to make at least one muslin. So I'm just done with sewing the muslin and it fits! I am generally pretty happy with how this first muslin is fitting. Um, the most important part, or rather the, the part that I was most worried about, which is this front shoulder seam right here, it is laying kind of nice and flat on my body. But there are still some other things that I want to change about um, the pattern before I move on to start cutting into my real fabric. I had this little excess bit of length along my back neckline. So I'm taking that out on the paper pattern. Now looking at my front neckline, I feel like this is just a little bit too low for my liking. Now imagine this is the opening and then the collar is just going to go right here. I don't know, I, I want it a bit more snug. So I'm going to raise the neckline over here on the front just by a tiny little bit. I am redrafting the center front piece and I'm also going to pay a little bit more attention to marking out the bound buttonholes that I'm going to be adding to the cape. 
Now, because I've made changes to the front and the back neckline, I also drafted the collar for the second or third time. This is probably going to be good. And since I am close to cutting the real fabric, I also decided to add seam allowance to the collar pattern piece. Now, you will also notice that I didn't cut the full kind of like a dress length for this muslin because I'm just trying to save fabric. But looking at how this shorter length looks on me, I decided that I probably would like my wool cape to be a little shorter as well. So I am chopping two inches off all along the hem of my final pattern. I know my inconsistency in adding seam allowance to my pattern pieces is probably a little bit confusing. It's much easier to make changes to pattern pieces without seam allowance included. So if I'm working on a pattern and I feel like that is not the final version, I'm going to make a muslin um, and I'm going to make changes, then I would rather have the pattern pieces without seam allowance. And also I have this little vintage rotary cutter with kind of like a seam guide. So I can actually just add seam allowance as I trace the pattern pieces out um, really easily with this little nifty tool. Now we're all about working smarter and not working harder. I anticipated that tracing wouldn't work so well on the wool blend fabric. So for pattern pieces without seam allowance added, I traced them out on my cotton lining fabric first with my special vintage tracing wheel. And then wherever appropriate, I used the cotton fabric pieces as a template for cutting the wool blend fabric. I'm just gonna be honest with you for a second. I actually really procrastinated for a long time for this project. Other than the fear of the end result being a little bit of a disappointment, I'm also a little bit put off by the idea of constructing the cape because it's my first time drafting a cape from scratch, like I said. What I've done is I have written down all the steps to constructing based on how I thought about it in my head. And I am just gonna try to approach it um, step by step, little by little, and work my way through it slowly. Here are all the pieces I cut for sewing my cape. Two pieces of the collar, two pieces of the front, two pieces of the front facing, two pieces of the side front, one piece of the back, one piece of the back facing, and of course the lining pieces. As with all projects with bound buttonholes, I started off by sewing the bound buttonholes first, which is a little annoying because I usually like to leave the unpleasant parts of sewing to the last. But once I made my first practice buttonhole with this fabric, I knew I was going to be okay. To sew the bound buttonholes, I used the same technique as I did in my in-depth sewing tutorial on how to sew bound buttonholes. I sewed a scrap patch over the buttonhole, then I cut the hole open, um, I turned the scrap patch to the wrong side of the fabric and stitched the lips of the buttonholes in place. Of course, these aren't perfect, but I think they turned out pretty good. Next, I started sewing the facing of the cape. After sewing the front and back facing pieces together along the shoulder seams, I finished the outer edge of the facing with a half inch wide single fold bias tape. First, I unfolded the bias tape and sewed them along the outer edge with the quarter inch seam allowance, right side of the bias tape to the wrong side of the wool facing. Then I flipped the bias tape to the right side of the wool facing, clipped and stitched it in place. I just really like the way facings look when the outer edge are finished with bias tape. Here's what the facing looks like with the edge finished and my 2023 tag attached. Next, I sewed the front and side front pieces of the cape together. The seam between the front and the side front pieces have a slight curve to it, kind of like a princess seam in a way. So I had to clip the seam allowance and ease the fabric in place along the curve. 
And after sewing that seam, I clipped the seam allowance some more so I could press the seam flat nicely. Okay, a note on pressing, I definitely should have planned better and bought a tailor's clapper before the time crunch for this project, but I didn't. I worked around that by pressing the seam with another scrap piece of wool between my cape and the iron, and then holding the scrap wool in place with my hand until the cape is cooled. I'm actually making a good amount of progress, but I realized that I forgot to add hem allowance to my other pieces. I only added it to my um, center front piece. The side front piece is like two inches shorter than the center front piece, um, which means my final cape is going to end up being two inches shorter than what I wanted it to be. Yep. Life goes on and I am learning to not let little mistakes like this ruin an entire project for me. Next, I sewed the front and back of the cape together. I placed them right sides together, making sure that I have all the curves matched up nicely. After that, I clipped the seam allowance along the curved part of the seam and pressed the seam open just as I did before. Now I realized that this concave seam is making the clipped sections of the seam allowance overlap and this was introducing some unevenness to the seam while pressing, so I ended up clipping notches for both sides of the seam allowance and this helped to eliminate the overlap and my curved shoulder seam was able to sit a lot more smoothly after this. Now, I am anticipating a lot of stress on the curved shoulder seams on both sides here, partly because of the weight of the fabric itself and also the amount of notching that I had to do in the seam allowance just so that I could press the seam allowance flat. So I'm sewing this little short strip of um, non-stretchy thin polyester material called seam binding just in this little section of the curve over here to reinforce the stitches and I'm also going to be sewing uh, about an eighth inch away from the original stitch line in the seam allowance area to really add an extra, I don't know, layer of security. Really just to reinforce the whole area. After that, I continued to sew the rest of the cape together. I think my favorite part of this sewing project is definitely sewing the collar because it is like the crown on the cape. Without this collar, this cape wouldn't be half as cute as it turned out to be. Now, if you love rounded collars like I do, give this video a thumbs up. And if you don't like rounded collars, okay, let's move on. We have a situation. Now, the collar is based on the cape. I am getting really close to finishing. But remember what I said about the shoulder dart? I feel like it's a little pokey. It didn't look like that on the muslin, probably because the weight of the fabric is a little different. Can you see the pokiness? There. So I'm gonna take it in a little bit here. Okay, I'm not quite sure how obvious it is, but I definitely feel that this seam right here sits a lot better on my body now that I've taken it in by like just one eighth of an inch. I am so close to finishing. I have stitched up the lining pretty much the same way as I sewed the main um, side of the cape. I've got the armhole opening left open and I top stitched kind of like all around it to uh, secure the edge and now I'm gonna put the cape down and I'm gonna put the facing and the cape right sides together and then I'm gonna lay the lining right over it and stitch it all around from like the bottom here up around the neck and then down the other side. I ended up deciding to add the facing and lining one at a time because I figured that sewing all four layers of wool was definitely going to be a bit of a challenge for my sewing machine. And handling the curved seam of all the layers, that definitely took the difficulty level up another notch. Look at my arms getting a workout. I had to pull the fabric to ease the curves in place and shove it through my sewing machine to get the facing attached right and to make sure that I wouldn't end up with any puckering along the curves. But yes, I got it done. 
With the lining attached to the cape, it's time for a whole lot of hand sewing. Is it just me or is the last lap of sewing always the most painful? Okay, so here's what I had to hand sew. I had to hand sew the lining to the wool around the armhole opening, the lining to the wool along the facing, the buttonhole on the facing side, and last but not least, the hem. And here is how the cape looks. So this cape actually turned out to be practically the exact shape and style that I imagined in my head, which we know doesn't happen all the time. I am truly in love with the rounded collar that I drafted. I think the size and the shape of this collar is the perfect proportion with the rest of the cape. Towards the end of the project, I also decided to paint the buttons with a yellow nail varnish just to tone down the brightness of the original yellow just by a little bit. It's a little tricky to see it in the video, but the yellow now actually is a much better match with the muted mustard yellow of the wool blend fabric. When hemming the cape, I also had to spend a little bit more time to make sure that both the left and right sides of the opening are the equal length. And also, even though the cape ended up to be two inches shorter than I originally intended it to be, I don't feel like it's too short on me. I think the proportion is just right for my height. Now, if I were to sew this cape all over again, I think what I would change is the construction of the armhole openings. I am now thinking that perhaps having like an opening that kind of looks like the um, opening of a welt pocket would make the armhole openings look a little classier. I don't know. I would also want to be thinking about how I can attach the lining in a more efficient manner. So when it comes to sewing winter wear, I do feel like a fish out of water. Um, I plan to do a little bit more reading, a little bit more learning. I think I want to follow a pattern and actually try to do some proper techniques. But I don't even know what the proper techniques are, you know what I mean? Because I don't know what I don't know. And that's going to be exciting because learning new things is exciting. Now, if you have enjoyed watching my process of sewing this wool cape together, then you'll definitely enjoy this other video where I also go through my process of drafting an oversized sailor style collar from scratch. Thank you so much for watching my video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it because it really goes a long way. I will see you in the next one. Bye!